Yeah. All right, so I know I know I threw you a bit in the deep end there, but you know what? I'm, I'm okay with that uh, because we can come out of the learning pit again. So have a look. I know several of you already have this, which is great. So thumbs up to you. But uh, for those of you who are like, mm, what, what's up with these tables? Okay, I'm going to unpack everything. So let's just start from the top. Here. I've introduced to you two logical statements that everything else is based upon. And you can see them there as P and Q. It's raining, it's cold, and we're going to consider all of the relationships and interactions between these two logical statements. Okay. So uh, you can see up in the top left hand corner, near my basic statements, um, I have two like very small building blocks on top of that, which is the <coughs> negations of these basic statements. And as I mentioned before, I'm imagining a very simple binary weather world. If it's not cold, we will call it hot. If it's not raining, I'm just going to call it dry, okay? I'm not worrying about any of this equatorial humid stuff, okay? So when you've got P and Q, not P and not Q, you can see this myriad of ways to combine them. We don't even have the full list here, we've just got a whole bunch of them, okay? So uh, let's have a look over here in the bottom left hand corner. This is one of the, the simplest ways that you can combine these two, thinking that one logically leads to the other. One's a condition for the other. So we've got if it's raining, then it's cold. And you can see which one is P and which one is Q. So that's why the order of my implication matters. Now have a look closely, there's another implication there. Right? I'm just sort of going anti-clockwise around because that's what we're used to doing in complex numbers. This one down here, um, this worth, I asked you to get your books out by the way, if you haven't already done that, please do. When you can see this implication running in the opposite direction, right? Do you remember we had a name for this? It starts with a C, I think. It's a word we've used actually for a long time, we just um, haven't been too technical about it. It's the converse, right? So saying the implication by going in the opposite direction. So a really common one that you guys actually know and have dealt with, this is why I said to a long time ago, is Pythagoras' theorem. Pythagoras' theorem? How would you state Pythagoras' theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We know what A, B, and C signify. They're sides in a what? In a right angle triangle. So in fact, even though we would state Pythagoras' theorem as, in fact, we're going to jump down, right? We would state it as this equation. This is actually the Q in the P and Q of Pythagoras' theorem. There's something that leads before this. Namely, the A, B, and C are in a right angle triangle. It doesn't work. Pythagoras' theorem, as you know, <clears throat> does not work in non right angle triangles. You've got to, um, you've got to soup up Pythagoras' theorem with an adjustment factor if you want to deal with non right angle triangles. Right? So there's an if this is true. Then this is true. P implies Q. In this case, and you've done this before, right? I should start with this, right? We know that if this is true, if you look at any old triangle, because you got asked to do this in like your exams, right? If you can prove that this is true, you measure them, you show this relationship, that actually tells you that you have a right angle triangle. So the converse of Pythagoras' theorem is also true. <laughs> you guys know. That's not always the case. Uh, a converse doesn't always lead to you know something that's true, right? Um, I just gave you an example here. Maybe you disagree with both of those because you know you might come from somewhere where it's hot and raining. Uh, but my point is that you need to think about the fact that those are two different relationships, right? Okay, let's start to dive a little further in. Uh, which one shall I go to next? Ah, okay. So where are the equivalent statements? I haven't labeled them as equivalent statements, but which one of these? tells you that P and Q are logically equivalent. Which one? Both arrows. Like the arrows on both sides. Yeah, so it's the two side arrow, isn't it? Right? Um, and so we would say, it's raining if and only if. That means raining has to lead to cold. Cold also has to lead to raining. Does that make sense? So we call those equivalent statements. Now, what else is familiar here? Ah, okay. Uh, let's look at that negation just up above. Someone more organized would have put these cards in a more useful order. You can see here I've got three cards together, right? So if it's raining, then it's hot. Where does that hot come from? Is that you have already talked about the negation? Yeah, it's the negation of Q, right? So you can see that's why, just literally interpreting that, right? If it's raining is P, if it's hot is not Q. And then I've got the implication running, right? But do you remember, this is one of the um, things that we focused on on Tuesday's lesson, this negation, 
he needs to not do, right? This was our result from actually negating the whole statement, right? This is, if I don't worry about this for a second, rainy means it's cold. You negate the whole thing, it's actually the resultant condition, right, that actually gets negated, which was a bit weird. We were like, oh, where does this go? Does it just go through all the brackets? It doesn't. So this is my reminder for okay. Before I go and have a look at these tables, are there any questions on those basic standards? Does that make sense? Yeah. Happy yes so far? Okay. Here's where it starts to get trickier, right, and where we need to have a proper discussion. Actually, what I'd like you to do is, for these tables and the cards that go with them, those I'd like you to have in your book, because after you close your laptop, they're going to disappear, right? We need to have a discussion about this. Let's talk about P and Q. P and Q. So that's here, sort of in the middle of the screen. So P is its raining, Q is its cold. So when I say P and Q, it's as straightforward as just putting the word and in between there. Um, but I'm a bit lazy grammatically, so rather than saying it's raining and it's cold, I've just said it's raining and cold. Now this thing, this object that you can see underneath me, I'm going to draw up my own one, listen to my own advice. Uh, this object here is called a truth table. A truth table? Um, it's called a truth table because it's a table that tells you what's true and what's not true, right? So you can see up in the top here, I think, did I put P and not P on top? I did, right? Yeah. P, not P, Q, not Q. So if P and Q are both being regarded as true, then I have to think about which of these combinations of P, not P, Q, not Q, are going to be represented by the same P and Q. Okay. Now we want both of them to be true at the same time. Does that make sense? It's going raining and cold simultaneously. So that's why you can see in my uh, console there, I pop this one as true. And everything else gets excluded because I, I'm not, I don't have room in this statement for either P or Q to be false. Hmm. A little language there. Let me say that one more time. When I say P and Q must be true, I'm not leaving any room for the possibility that P is false or Q is false. So in fact, these are all excluded. Right? When you say P and Q, you're locked into this top left hand corner. Okay. Now, uh, what else do I have? Do I have to do? Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Okay. Now, this is why it's important and why I think it's helpful to understand what's the negation, sorry, no, 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 not the negation, yeah? What's the uh, parallel result for if I change that word to all? Some people will last lesson kind of like, oh, if I get a single word wrong, will I like, lose marks in my exam response or whatever? And the answer is, well, just like in arithmetic, right? If you just put a minus sign there that doesn't belong, or if you change, I don't know, a multiplication into a division, it's like such a teeny tiny symbol. You're gonna lose a mark for that? Well, it dramatically changes the meaning of your equation, your expression. And a word like or, or and, also dramatically changes the meaning of your statement. So you've already got this probably in your book because you've had a head start on me. But when we put our P not P, and our Q, not Q here, right? P or Q. Uh, we can actually include many more options than this, right? If I said it's raining or it's cold, right? For starters, here's it's raining. Did I get that order right? I did. <laughs> uh, it's raining. So, raining but not cold, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, cold but not raining, that's also fine. Now, we need to answer the question about these two, right? Now, I think we could all agree that if it's neither of them, that's excluded by this. You have to be at least one of them, right? But now, this is where the language starts to get a bit confusing. And people ask me this exact question, not for it raining cold. I think it was something like, one of the first questions you had in the exercise was, uh, Bob is correct and A is correct, something like that, right? And what was the negation of that? Now, to understand what the negation is, I want you to answer with me why it is that I put in true in this top left hand corner. How can you argue that this has to be the case? Any takers? What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, the other one says um, it's, uh, it's rainy or cold, but not both. So is that why it's got to be false or that both why? And then yes, yeah, so it's got to be the true one. Okay, very good. So we're kind of anticipating this other table here, which has a different value and different words that go with it. 
I will come to that in a second, as you can see. Do you have a different thought or a similar? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um, the necessary condition for the statement to be true is that one of them is true. Hmm. And since at least one of them is true, then it must be true. Okay. It doesn't matter if the second one is true or false. Interesting. All right. There was a lot in that sentence just there. And what I really liked about that is not just that it was helpful, but also that we use some of the language we've already been introducing here. So particularly you talked about necessary conditions, right? So we say if P implies Q, then P is necessary for, sorry, Q is necessary if P is true, right? Now we can actually say the same thing of here. If one of them is true, that'll lead to at least one of them being true. And I actually don't need to worry about the other one. I can say, it, sorry, I'm running out of space here, right? I can say that the other one, too, right? If one of them is true, then I can see that you're going to get this other one, which has both of them in it, also being included. Now, I'm just going to give you a really simple English, I'm, I'm trying to make boil things down to as simple as possible, right? A simple English explanation for why the word we use here, by the way, is inclusive, right? P or Q, inclusive means I'm okay with, I should write it in, I'm okay with both. Right. If I said to you, hey guys, you're heading out for the day, if it's raining or cold, bring a jacket. Let me say that one more time. You're heading out today, if it's raining or cold, bring a jacket. So you look out the window, I actually picked a terrible day to use this example, but this is my logical statements can be false as well, right, so we're okay with that. If you looked outside and it was both raining and cold, would you bring a jacket? No. Yes, you would, because you're like, well, I've met one of the conditions, so therefore I better bring it, otherwise I'm going to be cold and I'm going to be wet at the same time, right? So if you just see was P or Q, we're including both of them as well. That's a possibility. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Now that leads us right along to the last truth table. I think it's the third and last one. I'm not going to draw it because I think you've by now got it, right? And um, this is what Zhao was referring to. If I, I need another color. If I say, and, and sometimes you have to be really careful because textbooks will sometimes sneak this word in and you kind of, you, you sort of blur over it, right? A negative sign changes the meaning of a state, makes it opposite. opposite. Um, a word like this completely changes the statement, right? Or if I said P or Q, and I'll kind of give you both on the card sort, but not both, right? P or Q, but not both. Or if I said either P or Q, or if I was like, I want to be double sure, I P or Q, but not both. Remember I said before, P or Q is just, it's inclusive, it includes everything, right? If you see either of these phrases, this actually gets its own name. It's not in the syllabus, but I think it's actually a really helpful name to have in your head because it tells you what it is. It's called the exclusive or. Um, any of you who do now or will go on to um, software design, the uh, abbreviation for this is X4, X4 exclusive, right? Now you can see the difference in the table, right? In the true table that goes with this. I'm including P but not Q, that's fine. I'm including Q but not P, also fine. But if I'm like, ah, I don't want both, that's why the false goes up here in the top left hand corner. Does that make sense? 